This is a Tuesday, February 6, 2018, and I'm in Fort Lauderdale Beach, Florida. And I have with me Mary Little C. Kennedy. My first question to her is to tell us your name and spell it. My present name is Mary Kennedy, K-E-N-N-E-D-Y. But my maiden name was Whittlesey, W-H-I-T-T-L-E-S-E-Y, when I went to Oak Ridge. Great. So talk, talk about um, how, um, who your mother was and how you found yourself in Oak Ridge and what year that was that you found yourself there. In 1943, my mother had had a business college in Knoxville, Tennessee, and she was constantly conscripted to go to Oak Ridge to be a secretary and manage a field. So she moved. I stayed with my grandmother. And she was the first woman in Oak Ridge to receive a house. So my grandmother said, I must go. And I didn't want to go. But it was actually the best thing in the world that ever happened to me. I went to high school there. And it was a, a marvelous experience because everyone was on the same field. No one had social prestige over another. As teenagers, we had our own rec hall. We had the best teachers in the country. And it was the best two years of my life. A wonderful experience. So Look, how old were you when you came? I was 15 when I went and 17 when I graduated from high school. And I was in the first graduating class. But I marvel now, looking back on it, how attentive the government was to the teenagers at that time, because they had such an important thing going on. But they made sure the teenagers were cared for. We had dances almost every night. We had a team. We had drama classes. We had art classes. And it was a marvelous school, even though it was a an old building on the top of a hill where the mud, <laughs> the rain, <laughs> we would slide into, into class full of mud. But it was a wonderful experience. The teenagers were, well, in, when I was in high school, I thought I wasn't very bright. I had one chemistry teacher who said, Mary, you are smart. You should not think yourself just average. But I did, and I went to college after that and was graduated summa cum laude. And then when I went back for the 10-year reunion at my high school, I saw why I thought I was dumb. I was there with such brilliant young people from the greatest minds in the country. And I would go there, and there are college presidents and doctors and coming in on their own. <laughs> so I realized, by comparison, I thought I was dumb. But it was a wonderful time. We had a wonderful few years at the, that high school. So one thing, uh, I was just looking at your yearbook, and it seems that you were involved in almost everything. Oh, yeah. Back then, to be popular, you were wholesome, active. And I wasn't so much wanting to be a good person but I wanted to be popular. So, so I learned how to, to make friends, and, and I was. I was popular. I was well-liked. But I loved the people that I worked with. Looking back, I can see that there were things that, that would be confusing to me today. For example, our high school was all white. We had famous black scientists who worked in another area, and the, the young people went to a different school, and I wasn't even aware of all that. I've always said that during the Second World War, I jitterbugged my way through high school. I, was, I had very little political expertise. And as I grew and, and learned, I recognized how the government did what needed to be done for the time. And it was a marvelous thing when you think about how they, the city went up overnight. And as teenagers, we were in a, an area where we could not leave. Nobody discussed anything. 
My mother worked in sensitive areas and I never heard one word from her about what was going on. So it was an interesting time in history and I'm very grateful to have been one of the high schoolers going there the first time. Do you um, remember what it was like or what your house was like? She said your I, mom had a first house? Yes, it was a very small two-bedroom house on Fern Hill. The streets were named, you know, the Florida and all the streets going off Florida were F. I think it was 113 Fern Hill. And it was, but all the houses were the same. You had three bedrooms and four bedrooms and two bedrooms, but they were all identical. And so it wasn't as if some houses were grander than others. And it was a, a darling little house to have gone up overnight. I mean, just one day, no house, and then the next day, a whole neighborhood of houses. It was really an exciting time in history. And some of those houses are still standing. A lot of them are still standing and decorated and uh, landscaped and beautiful homes. But then they were just prefabs. Do you remember um, how they were heated? No, <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> I remember that we, we had um, lots of fellowship at the house and we always would come in after dancing and cook scrambled eggs and but I really don't remember. It certainly wasn't air conditioned, I'm certain of that. But heating, I don't remember. So where were the dances? The government had a recreation hall just for the teenagers. It was a wonderful thing. Every day after class, we would uh, gather jitterbug. We had our own jukebox, our own soda fountain. Um, and then there were also um, a lot of outside dances and we were never short of something to do. If you remember in Oak Ridge, the, in the woods there were wooden walks throughout behind the houses and you walked on the wooden walks so you could walk almost any place into Oak Ridge down to the town center. There were buses that ran and I don't know whether everyone went free, but teenagers went free on the buses. So we were not at all limited in, in activities because I think they didn't want the teenagers to feel like they needed to go outside the area for entertainment. But it was wholesome and good. It was good entertainment. I've often thought today, if teenagers had a place to gather, get acquainted, talk, there wouldn't be so much loneliness and, you know, a indifference to one another. Because if anything else, we learned how to relate to each other. And we learned what it was like to go out into the world. It was a good, good environment. Do you remember how big your uh, high school was? How many students? <clears throat> I think maybe eight or nine hundred total because uh, none of in when I, I went when I was a junior and there was not a senior class I would imagine that seniors wanted to stay in their own environment until they graduated but there were 18 or 20 who graduated mid-year but by and large we were a very small school. One thing I remember, some of the girls in the school wanted to start a uh, sorority. And others of us said, oh no, we don't believe in that sort of thing. We want a group that's open to everybody. So a group of us started what we called the Penguin Club. I don't know why we called it the Penguin Club, but it was for people just, you know, who were leaders who wanted the best for the school, the best for the community, and we started that little club. The Penguin Club is still going in Oak Ridge, but it's become a society club, <laughs> which is really hilarious. But we had, it, it was a good, good beginning. So 
your mother came, um, and then you also had an older brother. Was it older brother? Just two years older, yes. He was in the service at the time. And then when he came back, he worked for Oak Ridge. And I had a brother-in-law who was a chemist and worked, and another brother-in-law who worked at K-25. So they worked at Y-12 and K-25. But it was never discussed. Nothing was ever discussed. We all knew there were important things going on in the war effort, but I had no idea of what was being done. And when I learned after graduation what we had made, I was terribly distressed, thinking of all the, the dreadful things of, of the atomic bomb. And it was, a, it was a crucial time in my life. Many years later, I began to recognize that it was a necessity and it was essential. But at the time, it was for a young person with high ideals, it was a crushing blow to me. However, in retrospect, I, I see so much that I did not see at the time. But it was a painful time for me. Photograph of the day the news came. Oh on yes, August 6th. I Everyone remember that now, day. Yeah, do you remember that? I remember that day. I do. So what were you doing on August? I, I happened to be in the in the rec hall because I had decided to go into nursing training in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, and when that news came out, and it was shortly after that that I went to. Uh, Massachusetts to take my POTS exam and I was going through New York when all the celebration was going on, the VJ Day. So it was, um, I remember that day very clearly. So you were alone on a train? Going, well, yeah. I know I, the news broke while I was still in Oak Ridge, oh, I but I was getting on a train to go to Massachusetts. I see. So it was a, a difficult day for me. It was mixture, joy and sadness. So when your new classmates in Fitchburg asked you where you came from, did, did you tell them, yes, I came from the home, hometown of the Tom well, Tom, or how did that go? Well, I came from Oak Ridge, and, and of course, in Massachusetts, I was from Tennessee, and they liked my accent. <laughs> but. I didn't stay in nurses training. I went through the probationary period and I realized nursing was not for me. And it was a, a, it was a matter of, of getting nurses training for nothing because I didn't realize, you know, that I could even go to college. When I came back, I continued working for the dental, as a dental assistant, which I had done in high school. And I met uh, the cousin of Art Buckwald, Elias Buckwald, and dated him. And he was so academically minded. He insisted I go to college. And it was because of Elias that then I went into college and, and then I was a teacher for many years. And it was, it was just the turn of events. So can you explain again who, who the Elias is? Elias Buckwald was the first cousin of Art Buckwald. And he was in the service. He was in the service in Oak Ridge. And I dated him, and he was a great influence on my life because he insisted that I go to college. I think I had $300 to my name. And he went on the train with me to Tennessee Tech and got me enrolled and made sure that, <laughs> that I took high classes and hard classes. And, and, and he said, if you make straight A's the first year, then they will expect to give you straight A's. So, you know, his advice, he was just really bright and had the same sense of humor that Art Buckwald had, funny and a good dancer. So he was a, a light of my life at that time. That's and very great. great help. So you, were you um, in college then for the next four years? Or the I was years? in college. I, I finished in three years, and then I received a scholarship to go to the University of Miami to get my master's. And I was a reading, remedial reading expert, uh, technician reading. I majored in remedial reading in English and taught English and remedial reading for a number of years. 
in between babies. I had seven children, married my first husband, and we had seven children. So we had a good life, but I do attribute a lot of my stability and balance to my high school years in Oak Ridge. And I have great admiration for whoever planned the city that they made special consideration for teenagers. I've just celebrated my 90th birthday and I would not take anything for those few years of my adolescence. They were happy years. Well, that's a wonderful uh, tribute. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I have a great love for uh, Oak Ridge and the little town center, the little movie theater, the, the small little environment and the way people came together for the cause they didn't even know what they were doing. No one knew what. I think that people individually who had an insight into the, the reality of what was taking place had more to worry about than I did. As I say, I just jitterbugged my way through high school and the war. So you, you mentioned that some of the dances were outdoors. Yes, they had uh, tennis courts, lots and lots of tennis courts. So at night they would light them up and we had bands. We had a wonderful man who played records and, and the teenagers had certain nights on the, on the tennis courts for dancing. The adults had other nights, but almost every night during the, when it wasn't too cold, there were outside dances on the tennis courts. And of course, the, back then, the high schools always had several formal dances, evening gowns, all that sort of thing. So I imagine we had at least 10 formals during the year. And uh, I, I think one thing that I enjoyed in the community were the community plays. There were you know, I was in, uh, I acted in the, some of the community plays, and that was a way for the teenagers to get acquainted with the adults in the community. So there was, there was even planned in, uh, interaction that way. It was a, a secret city that grew up overnight, but well planned by someone. I wish I knew who.